What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're looking at the 32 inch vertical cabinet running my personal image, Hyper Vertical. Killing it, man, I'm killing it. <laughs> All right, guys, you know the drill. Instagram, at Vic underscore VP. Why aren't you following? Be sure to follow me. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube and so forth. I know it's a broken record, but I got to do my whole social media plug. So there it is. If you were following me, you would have seen everything from me sitting down on the computer and making the hyperspin stuff to the artwork to building it to the marquee and to the on its feet and rolling it and bringing it down into my room and you would have seen the whole nine yards, so what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, OnlyFans. <laughs> be sure to follow on all that. But on this one today, we're going to be looking at the 32-inch vertical cabinet. I am, I love this cabinet. I love all my cabinets. I know it's, it's, it's another broker. I love all my cabinets, but this one right here, this is just on another level. This is, it, I had an idea. And now it's like seeing it in person, it's mind blowing. I, I can't get enough of this cabinet. This cabinet is, is gorgeous. I love it. I love everything about it, how compact it is, the screen about it. I'm gonna be going full in depth on this one. So grab a coffee or whatever and let's talk. Now if you look around, like I have my cabinets. I love all my cabinets. And this one though is very, it's, it's just like my Bivik. I'm getting the same energy and positivity once I made my Bivik cabinet, because this is kind of like my design. You know, I do have the Bivik. I have the Neo Geo replica. I have the Konami replica. I got the Party Cade. I have all that, but it's kind of like, it's a different feeling when it's like a design that started from scratch and then you put it into like the CNC work and the, you know, SketchUp and it's different. I'll be honest, so this is probably the last cabinet uh, that I have in mind. I have my Bivik series, whether you want an actual control panel, four player, two player, or if you want the party cave style. And now you got the vertical cabinet. Everything else, like other stuff, I'll still get excited about, but other stuff like, you know, for example, like the Konami cabinet and the Neo Geo replica, those are replicas. Those are basically like, you know, that's a Neo Geo cabinet. Neo Geo was the first one to create it and then I could just, you know, cut it. But just seeing like this, it's an idea that started from scratch, literally from like you press one button and then you press two to make a line and then another line. This is just, the, that's what I feel. This, that's why I love this cabinet and I love my Bivik cabinet. Again, I love all my cabinets, uh, but this one right here, this is like top. I wasn't like, what's the wording I want? I don't, a lot of people were suggesting and every time I would like show videos of like the Bivik and the 55 inch, everybody's like, oh man, you know, vertical games should be played on a horizontal screen. I'm like, listen, you could play those games at least. Oh, but your aspect ratio is ass. And why are you, like me personally on my arcade stuff, I have everything stretched to full screen. I don't do four by three because 55 inch, unless you do the bezels, that's my personal opinion. But one thing I definitely don't do is take a vertical game and stretch it 16 by nine on a horizontal screen. That I don't do because that looks like, it looks like, it looks like ass. That's that's awful but i was kind of going into like you know what i'm getting a lot of people that want like they don't want vertical cabinets but they keep making a comment about vertical cabinets i said you know what the only way to really enjoy a vertical game is to get a vertical cabinet like you have to get the screen turned you you, you need that any way real way to enjoy a vertical game that screen's got to be sideways that, that's how it is example you know the rk went up so you got the horizontals and then you got the verticals and some people are trying to put Street Fighter on the vertical cabinets. You got to spin the screen and no, honestly, this right here just alone only has vertical games on it. I'm going to go into trackball. We're going to go full in depth on this, but it's kind of awesome to just see like a dedicated vertical cabinet. This game doesn't have any media to it. So that's why the screen is like that, but it's, I love it. I love everything about it. Let's do a little bit of a backstory as far as the design and the artwork on this. I feel like we'll talk about the cabinet design, we'll go into the artwork, and then I'll talk about the software because honestly, the software side, I do have a plan to contact RK Punks, you know, via email, and I am looking to offer the software side, kind of like a vanilla version without the ROMs, as a public download. It's shockingly, not shockingly, but amazingly, it's not that big of a file. It's about like 35 gigs in total. So 
I think that's gonna be an awesome thing if, if I could do it. I just needed really a host. I did post to like my our personal like Facebook group, the Wizards. I did post like a torrent link and some people did download it. They did run into like little hiccups, but it's like basic hyperspin hiccups. But um, nothing major, it's just more about like, I, I would rather give this and, and offer this. We'll talk about the software side and why I chose hyperspin. We'll talk about that later on. But let's first talk about the cabinet design and we'll go into the artwork on this. Now, I knew I was gonna do a vertical cabinet eventually, um, way back. I mentioned, if you look at my videos way back, I bought my cousin, well, my cousin bought a cabinet and I picked it up for him. My cousin got the home edition Pac-Man Galaga. It's like, it was made for homes. It was a smaller version of a real, you know, upright. It was really cool. And I had it for a couple days before I delivered it to him because I cleaned it up and all that. And I just enjoyed it. I loved everything about it. Just, you know, Pac-Man Galaga cabinets, they're an iconic shape. They're, they're iconic. And I was like, you know what? While I have it here, I actually measured it. Like, I took every little measurement. The side, I went from like the bottom to where the control panel starts to the curve and how deep it is. I measured that cabinet top to bottom. And I did have plans to duplicate it. I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll duplicate it. I'll, I'll, I have my CNC stuff. I have to just sit down and make the design and then I'll duplicate it. And when it came time to build this, I was like, I can't, I can't duplicate it. I, I need something that's kind of more unique. Um, but the big thing, honestly, was the screen. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by the screen. If you look back again, another video that I made, it was really a YouTube short. I went to an arcade auction recently. This is maybe about a month or two ago. And I was there and I'm looking at the machines and one machine caught my eye. I've never seen it in person. I didn't know it was a thing, but I'll probably play it next to me. There was a machine there that I was gonna bid on, but it went overpriced. And it was a centipede, millipede, missile command cabinet. I saw it from a mile away and I was like, that, what cabinet? And number one, I was like, what cabinet is that? And then number two, I was like, that's a, that's a good, nice looking cabinet. The big deal with that cabinet was the screen, meaning how the screen was placed. Going back to the Pac-Man Galaga cabinet, that screen, it's laid down where if you're like, 30 feet away, you can't see the screen. You can just see the cabinet, but you can't actually see the screen. Whereas this millipede cabinet, centipede, millipede, missile command cabinet, I could see the screen a mile away because it was upright. It's like in your face, like, you know, here it is, here I am, play me, this is what the game, and in the attract mode, I was able to see it. So I knew I was gonna make a vertical cabinet. I was like, you know what? I gotta ditch the Pac-Man Galaga plan because if I'm gonna put a lot of games on it, you kind of want to see it from a mile away and you want to see a track mode. So I took, I, I just took pictures of it and I was like, this is a cool looking cabinet, but it was very bulky. I almost, I almost won the bid, but it went to like, I think it went to like, like five or 600 bucks. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, it was a bulky cabinet though. It was, it's your regular arcade cabinet. It was big, it was wide, it was bulky. And I was like, if I'm going to do a cabinet design, I kind of wanted to keep it on the slimmer side. Um, kind of compact, especially in my battle station setup. I don't have too much room really, but I made this cabinet to fit in the perfect pocket that it is over there and I'll take you later on. So I went to the drawing board. I was trying to figure out number one, like screen size. What, what am I thinking about for screen size? Cause I want to go big. I don't want to go huge, but I want to go big. So a 32 inch was the first thing that popped into my mind. Then I was looking at like a 43. Somebody suggested like a 50 inch. I was like, no, 50 inch is like pinball. Like, no. Even honestly, the 43 was too big. Honestly, the 32, you might be looking at it like, damn, that's kind of big. I think this is the max that a vertical cabinet should be. So originally when I go into the drawing board, same thing with the Konami cabinet and the Neo Geo cabinet, I actually take the dimensions of the TV and then I build the cabinet around the TV. So I was like, oh, perfect. You know, I don't remember exactly what this. I believe I'm going to grab the ruler. Let me grab the ruler before I make a comment. Hold on. So the overall width of this cabinet is 21 and three quarter inch. And you could grab your ruler and like measure it out real quick. That is, that's how wide this is. Depth on it, how deep it is. The farthest part of the control panel is 24 inches deep. Like I'm getting excited. You might be like, okay. Uh, go and measure it. That just kind of gives you the idea of the size of this cabinet. And it's sturdy. Like, 
It ain't gonna go nowhere. It's not gonna topple over. It's not gonna tip. You could bang on. It's not gonna go anywhere. So there's a lot to it when it comes to like the creation. So for example, like I said with Konami and Neo Geo, I built the cabinets on around the TV screen. So I was like, all right, 32 inch. It's about 17 inches, whatever it is, tall or wide or whatever. It's 17 inches tall, really. And I was like, all right, I got a game plan. 17 inches is the minimum, really, on the inside walls. Uh, and then I figured, you know what? What do I want to play? So I was like, I want to play centipede. I wanted a centipede cabinet. When I saw that centipede millipede cabinet, I was like, whoa, I love it. The white on it, just like the white sides, it, it hit me. Like I said, I caught it. I was like, all right, I love centipede. I'm going to make a centipede cabinet. And we'll go into artwork later on on why I did centipede millipede. But I wanted a centipede cabinet. That was my main focus. So what do I need? I need a track wall. Number one, I need a track wall. So I went around, did the measurements for the track wall. I said, cool. Then it went into like, do I want to keep it as one player? I was like, I don't do one player. Like, you know, 1942 and uh, Contra and um, uh, Akari Warriors. Like, that's two players. Like, I want to do a two player cabinet now. So it really kind of went as far as why is it this wide? It was really based on the control panel now. I knew all vertical games, like no, there's no more than four buttons, not even four, it's probably mostly three buttons, but I went four just in case. I knew I only needed four buttons, and I want two player, and I want the trackball. Then I'm like, wait a minute, Pac-Man is, and Donkey Kong is iconic vertical games, I need a dedicated four way, like that's, that's a must. So all these ideas go on and I sit down and I figured out there is no way to put all of this these components in 17 inches of, of width. Like there, there, was, there was no way to do it. So honestly, I went into my CNC file maker thing and I was like, okay, I got the, the I already have layouts for the, the, the joysticks, but I have to make them tighter so they're very close. Cause I didn't want to put this vertical cabinet and go, you know, 32 inches wide. It's gonna look stupid. It, it looks weird. It, all in all, there's just so much planning to it. And I'm just, I'm just very happy with the outcome on it. Now, real quick, because I know, I know people are looking at the pictures and like, Vic, you fucked up, man. What the, what, I thought you knew our cave, you fucked. So everybody definitely is looking at this area here. Everybody's looking at the trackball and the dedicated four-way. Vic, what are you thinking? What, what is this? You have Capcom bowling. What, what, what is this? And I'm like, you got to really like think things through because that shit comes up. <laughs> this is the coolest feature right here yes it is a detachable joystick yes i thought of everything i'm telling you i'm the type of person where if it's going to take me three or four days to figure out a control panel that's what it's going to take me and it was just so cool because i posted this video of the joystick coming out and so many people were commenting like like vic like that joystick plant and then at the end of the video i pulled it off and they're like oh shit you really thought of everything. I'm like, yeah, there's a company that makes detachable joysticks. It, I think it's awesome. I knew I wanted a dedicated four-way. The other alternative, and I almost pulled the trigger on it, and I'm glad I didn't, I was going to do the mag sticks. The mag sticks basically is a joystick that you pull up and then you spin the gate. And it'll change from four-way to eight-way. You could do that. But there's just something about, like, it's a mental thing. I need the dedicated four-way in the middle. I need it like in the middle. It's got to be in, at least in the vicinity of the middle. Um, so I knew I needed a dedicated four-way. So when it came to making the control panel, I, I, I no joke, I spent like two days like back and forth in my mind. I'm like, wait, you know, do I put the, do I put the, the dedicated four-way here, but then I have no room here. And I'm like, do I put the dedicated four-way in front of the trackball and there was so, I couldn't do that because if I put the trackball closer to the screen, I'm going to hit the screen. So there was so much going to it and then I figured out and I found this company that makes a detachable joystick. It's got like this nice pull, I don't know what the wording you want to do, but it's got a, like a barrel and you just pull it up. You just boop and it goes up. And then to put it back, push down, pull up and it lock, it's locked. It's locked. It's not going nowhere. I, that's like the coolest feature. I know people who watch like the promo videos and like, oh my God, this guy, he put a, a dedicated four-way in front of a trackball. I'm like, yeah, but it comes off. So <laughs> I think it's the coolest, it's the coolest feature, man. I, I think, I think that makes the cabinet. <laughs>
So let's talk about like the little hardware and stuff. So obviously I said I already spoke about the joystick. So the joystick, detachable joystick, the only kind of downside to the joystick originally when I was talking to the seller, um, not many people have this. Again, the main thing was to get this kind of, it was like a push-pull release joystick. Um, I was talking to the seller and I asked him, I said, does it have a four-way gate? And he said, no, it's only eight-way. So the only downside to the joystick was that I had to buy a separate gate, which I actually have and I had to buy it. I, I had a bunch from like older joysticks, like a Pandora's box. So keep that in mind if you're looking at this, it doesn't come stock with a dedicated four-way to eight-way kind of switch. You would have to get a separate gate. Next up, we'll talk about Groovy Game Gear and the Coin Buns here. So this is kind of cool. It looks like a coin door, like the actual where you put the coin in, like a coin slot, but it's actually a button here. And it's pretty cool. I, I kind of saw that and I was like, whoa, that looks awesome. It's got like these very high intense red LEDs. I have its own separate power supply for this. This actually, that lights needed 12 volts. My LED um, adjustable LED strip is five volts. These needed 12 volt. I was gonna wire it up to my addressables, but it was so dim, I was like, that doesn't look right. This is running with a 12 volt power supply, like an actual plug-in power supply. These look great. The only kind of downside that I have to say about this is the stem wasn't really long enough to catch the arcade nut. You know, when you sandwich the wood, you put the arcade, it wasn't long enough for that. So I luckily got it by really digging out but it works, it's cool. In the Street Lorenzo's, and then I went with the regular half concave buttons. The last kind of feature with this is that I did buy the micro switch, uh, leaf micro switches from Groovy Game Gear. It's a micro switch, but it's supposed to be a leaf switch. Uh, I regret those. Um, I don't suggest that. I bought four of them. I bought them for the flippers, and I bought them for player one, uh, button one on players one and two. So. Regular micro switches on three and four, but button one is uh, just a regular leaf switch, the leaf micro switch. Uh, I regret it. It's, it's technically still a micro switch. So you can actually physically feel the click. Like a regular micro switch, you can feel that click. You do feel that with these. And I'm not a fan. I should have went with like my pinball machines, the real gold leaf leaf switches, but other than that, you do have also the three inch um, Ultimark trackball, amazing. What's pretty cool, and I'll make a video about my whole entire arcade setup here, um, every machine has something unique, something special, something different. I don't really have any non-LED buttons on all my other uh, machines, so I did want to go with the regular half. Not to mention this is like classic vertical, definitely wanted the concave, and I really wanted that leaf switch feel, but Unfortunately, Groovy Game Gear, that, that leaf switch you're selling, they have other options, which is the regular gold leaf, but I kind of wanted to try this leaf. It wasn't, it was, it's not worth it. I wouldn't suggest it, so stay away from those. Then the last thing as far as little details, centipede, green. I knew I wanted green. I didn't want the regular green, so I got this lime green. So lime green team molding and the joysticks to match. I love it. I, I can't get enough of my centipede, millipede, get it. So I said, I, I thought about everything. Like, you know, I'm just so happy with how it came out perfect. You don't see it, but the trackball, Ultimark U-Track, right? The, the base of the trackball, you just see this ring, but this is a three inch ring. The base of the trackball overall is like five and a, and a quarter inches. So you only see three. Underneath is really another like inch and a half on each side. And there's a, there's, there's a block here. That's why these buttons have to be here. I, I no joke have maybe like three or four millimeters from this button here to the trackball. I, like I said, this is the tightest that the, the control panel could be. I could not get any tighter. There's no way. The, for example, the joystick, the base, I used um, Industry Lorenzo joysticks. That base is, is it's, I literally have like two or three millimeters worth of gap here. Uh, I thought of everything. <laughs> Let's talk about the artwork now. We'll get closer on, but let's talk about how the artwork came about. Centipede was my game. Where I was before Centipede, we used to have a Centipede and a Millipede game, but I love Centipede. Like, you just know. When you see the Centipede logo and it's like face, you know it's Centipede. So I knew I wanted Centipede. Going back to that auction cabinet, I've never seen in person. It caught my eye, the all white on the sides and the big Centipede on the side. I was like, wow. I love the art. It was sexy. Like it was, I don't, it was a sexy cabinet. It was gorgeous. So 
I kind of got that, the idea with the artwork from there, right? So I knew I wanted Centipede. I played Millipede 2, luckily guys. So I was like, you know what, Centipede, Millipede. I want to do this three game cabinet like I saw in the auction. So we'll look at the left side first. I knew where this cabinet was going to go in my room, in the, the battle station, and I knew it was going to go there. And I know, for example, there, you're going to only see the left because on the right is the door, the, the boiler room door. So I knew it's, I, I was going to focus mostly on the left. So I wanted Centipede, right? I'm looking up Centipede artwork and the Centipede itself is big. It's, it's big. It's a big file. Look at it. And the way that the cabinet is designed, I couldn't do it like a traditional centipede, meaning the whole side of it, you know, centipede's face is really here. I couldn't do that because it would just cut, it cut him off. And so I think the artwork idea that I came out with was great. I did big centipede here. So the biggest part of the cabinet, the widest part, the, the deepest part, centipede here. Then I was like, you know what? I can't leave a bear. I got to add a couple of more vertical games to it. So obviously I'm a big Mario fan. You gotta do Donkey Kong. I mean, Donkey Kong is iconic and classic. I was gonna do Galaga. I knew I loved my Galaga. I have Galaga here, secretly hidden. You do see Akari Warriors there. I'll bring you down a little bit because I don't think you see it. But you got Cubert and a game that I grew up with, and it's one of those. Um, uh, I you know now they have Dave and Buster's, but growing up we had the Kids Place, the Kids Place Two. That's like like it was it was a place like Dave. Think of Dave and Buster's, but it was just arcade cabinet. It was for kids. And the first probably vertical game I ever played was Circus Charlie. So I do have Circus Charlie on the bottom. Awesome. Up top here, 1941 planes. Now, when I was looking at like Centipede artwork, they, Centipede has, the original Centipede artwork has this border here, like this green border. And I was like, that's cool. Like, I gotta replicate that. So if you look carefully, it is, it, I was nervous about it because again, I know for example, my CNC machine does not make it perfect to the T. It's not 100% accurate, but I'm just happy with how I made the border. Um, little thing real quick. So uh, there's a website, I, I forgot what it's called. It was like arcadeartwork.org. They have Centipede. This is where it came from. Centipede here and it had the border. And I actually took the border from the side and I would actually copy paste, copy paste. And then I would have to edit the corners. So you can kind of see here, like this corner off here. I have that on purpose because that's really how the cabinet design is. It's got like the marquee here. I did that on purpose. That's not like a misprint. I wanted this little thing here because that's what the cabinet looks like. So artwork is just amazing. So you got your left side there. We'll bring you over real quick to the right side and I'll bring you down to see the Circus Charlie logo. But the other one is, is Millipede. The Millipede, this is just gorgeous. Again, Justin Gulf Coast decals, he's the printer for me. I give him the files, so I make the files and he prints. This is just amazing. I love, this is gorgeous. I love this. So again, centipede on that side, millipede here. And then I was adding some random ones. So Miss Pac-Man, she got the flipper in the face. Um, you got Burger Time. We got the Dig Dog, Invaders. And I'm drawing a blank right now on this one. Why am I drawing a blank on this one? Uh, Bomb Jack, boom. All vertical games, same idea with the border. Love it. Millipede honestly took up a lot because that is the actual side art to Millipede. It's just, and look, if you look carefully again, Millipede, you could see like Millipede at its own border and I merged it here. Look at the borders, like you could see like they go over the border. You know, the, the antennas are over the border. Whereas on the left side, I actually have some characters that go under the border and then over it. So for example here, Donkey Kong here, it's under the border here. You can see the fly here, it's under it. But on the left side here, they go over it. I did that on purpose. It's just a little detail, man. I, I love it. So real quick, we can take a look. I dropped the camera down a little bit. You could see the Circus Charlie here. Oh man. And then you got Cubert there. Again, the Akari Warrior is there. Granted, yes, Akari Warriors, you really need the the whatever it's called, the joystick that spins like a way, the actual, it spins like to spin the character. So a card is on this kind of cabinet setup is fun to play. It's not, it's not amazing. It's not what it's meant to be, but it still gets the job done. I will now spin the cabinet back to Millipede just so you can kind of see the bottom of it again. And, and this is, this is gorgeous. Ah, I love it, man. This is beautiful. I love it. I know it's weird to, say and sound, but amazing. I, I can't get enough of it.
So now real quick, we'll look at the kick plate here. We'll look at the marquee and all that. Again, I knew I was gonna take the concept of that three in one, that centipede millipede missile command. And I didn't like, I don't like missile command. I never played it, it doesn't intrigue me. So I was like, I like centipede, I like millipede, I like Galaga. Galaga is my game. So I was like, let me take this artwork now and let's incorporate Galaga to it. So I'm gonna, I might bring it a little bit closer. I don't know if you could see it, but the kick plate here is actually millipede kind of border slash bottom with the Galaga in the back. I'm telling you, it is, I, you know, I'm gonna give myself a pack on the back. It's this, so like, if you look carefully at millipede, you see like this green background? This right here is the actual millipede kick plate. If you look at the actual millipede kick plate, it's this image, but with green, like it's just green here. With the cards, I'll flesh it obviously. I took out the green, and then I put Galaga here. So I knew like I wanted Galaga right up top. I wanted like the space, like, that's what I wanted. This, the kick plate is amazing. I can't get enough of the kick plate. So now going with the millipede kick plate, I was like, you know what? We're gonna go with the millipede control panel. The center kind of just ties in. So you do have like the leaves here. Again, if you look at a millipede cabinet, this is what the, the, the actual control panel. The control panel has like that waterfall control panel. This is just a simple angle. So you got the leaves here and then up top is that green I'm talking about and the border. It's millipede, that's, that's the millipede border. I didn't want to do anything with the control panel because I didn't know where our was gonna be, where it lies, this is, this is what it is. I, I wasn't gonna go all out. I was originally gonna do like Galaga but, or I was gonna do centipede, but like centipede's control panel is like the three blocks and the, I was like, nah, let's just keep it basic and simple and I just put millipede on this. Now we're gonna talk about what, like the biggest eye catcher and that is the marquee. I love the marquee, you have no idea, I, I love it. This right here, this marquee is the actual marquee from that auction, like and not the actual one from the machine, but this is the one that the auction had. It had centipede, millipede, and then it had missile command here. I, I looked all over on the internet. I looked high and low. Only one person has like the image and it was grainy. It was a grainy image, but it would work. And that's honestly it. it is a, I'll, I'll bring you in, I'll zoom you in. But that is the grainy image it is. And I took out Missile Command. I made this triangle here, I took it out, and I put Galaga in it. The big thing you have to look at though, like Centipede and Millipede, right? Look, it's kind of like this unique artwork. And that's what you're like, look, centipede and the E has the border coming down. I was like, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take centipede and make it. I was gonna put the centipede logo that's on the side here, the regular artwork. I was like, no, I have to keep this original. This has to stay. Look at millipede. Like I said, you got the logo here, but it's got like the spider. It's got the fly. It's got, and then it had that, the suitable for all ages. I was like, I'm not gonna touch this. This looks great, but I gotta get rid of that missile command. Now, if you look at it though, yes. The Galaga looks much cleaner. It looks much crisper. Yes, it does because this is basically three or four separate images made into one just for the Galaga alone. This right here is one image from Google. But the Galaga, yes, it does look crisper. You have to really look at it, but I don't mind it. I just love it because I don't like Missile Command. I like Galaga and I, it's my cabinet and I get what I want. So centipede, millipede, Galaga, that right there. That's awesome, I, I, I love it, I, I can't get enough of it. So now like I said, I can just wheel this here. My cabinets are on casters, so they're always wheelable, movable, easy transport. And I knew it was gonna go in this corner. That was like the only space I have, the V-pin doesn't move, that's a big machine. I knew it was gonna go in this corner. And I, I, I can't get it up. I did put addressable LEDs on this. Um, I was gonna go with the classic, the regular ones, uh, mainly because of the unique coin button on this I forgot to talk about, and the trackball. I knew I wasn't gonna do LED buttons though. I did want the regular concave. Um, the addressable LEDs are cool. Um, it's just, when it comes to like LED buttons, I could tap in from the LED strip. I could tap in and, and connect the LED buttons to the strip. I can't do that with addressable, so there's an extra plug basically for these here. But all in all, it's pretty cool. I got it set to like a slow chase. I was gonna put it like to sound mode, and when like Galaga's fire goes off, it'll just kind of pew pew. But I, I'm not, I'm not that flashy. I'm kind of simple. I think it looks great. All right, now we'll talk about like the software side of it. Uh, this is running Z313 speakers, so I do have the volume rocker right here hidden. It's got 
that subwoofer on it, it's amazing. The speakers actually are up top here. I drilled holes here and they're pointing upwards because again, the cabinet design, there's a lot to it. You can see how thin it is, you see that? The TV is like, it ends like here, the TV. Cause again, you got the TV and then the mount. The TV is about like four inches deep alone. So a lot to it. And also if you notice to match that white, I went also with white wood. So that indent right here, you see this? This is actually white wood that I had to do. Instead of getting my regular black, I actually got white wood because as you can see, you know, my original intent was that it's, it was supposed to be clean. Like this, this glass is supposed to be here, but the control panel would be a little bit more like out more. And I wanted to cut, I wanted to use like one or two sheets of, of wood max. Uh, going with this though, it took one sheet just to cut the side panels. The rest of it I had lying around. So as far as like a cost on my end, I had spare wood. So I just had to buy one sheet. No, Vic, can you make a deal like that? No, I have to, this is gonna always usually take about two to three inches to three sheets of wood. My Bivik cabinets take three to four. So I know what it is to build. But going back again, like I said, this is running hyperspin. Now, big thing I wanna make a comment about this hyperspin. Uh, and I can't take all the credit. When I was looking at like images, I've I've done Mr. Burns, right? I, I, I have a video of it, the Mr. Burns Raspberry Pi image, right? Number one, the Raspberry Pis right now, they're expensive. I'm like, do I wanna spend like $200 on like, that's what, I'm not, maybe it's like 150, I don't know, but I was like, my only complaint with the Mr. Burns image was that it didn't have centipede. And me personally, when it comes to trackball, I have the worst luck getting trackball to work with Raspberry Pis. I've given up on it. So I was gonna then go into the King of Air. I was gonna get the Pandora's Box version of the vertical. And I was like, you know what? If I wanna do it right and I need that centipede trackball, I'm gonna put a PC in it. So now here's where I knew I was gonna do a PC build and I know hyperspin. Now, I'm a hyperspin guy, I like my hyperspin. I knew I was gonna do hyperspin. So the first thing I did, I honestly searched up if anybody made a vertical hyperspin image. And there is one person, so I can't take the total credit on this. Uh, if you look up literally hyperspin vertical, you might find my videos now, but there is somebody that made an image called Hyper V. It's all, it just says Hyper V. And it's only like one video. Uh, it, was, it was only, um, it, was, it was just this. You would launch in and it would just give you this. It didn't have like a main screen and then into a sub menu. So it doesn't have like a console and then you go in. So for example, I have arcade, pinball, FX2, FX3. That's the consoles menu. You go into arcade and then you have the games. It didn't have that. So this person made this image and it just, I guess it didn't like take off. I don't know. It, 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 I don't know how to explain it. The back end of it is not mine. It goes out to this person that made Hyper V. I just added to it. Um, a couple of things I did tweak on it. He had like this kind of main menu interface, which is cool. Half of it I am using, you can kind of see the top bars there. But his like theme, it was like the vertical image was small. So it was like a very small video here and everything was black. I basically redid the theming and I just stretched the video. I am using his videos, but you could kind of see that it is like pixelated. That's because his original videos were small. Like I'm not, it was like this small. So I did, I basically took out the border. I went in, I went into the theme and I modified it. And I just, I blew up the video and I know it looks pixelated here, but at least from afar, you can, it catches your eye. But once you actually get into the game, it does look good. It looks great. So for example, like the big one I noticed is like, if I load up, load up Akari Warriors, it's like the preview is like, it looks weird. It's like pixelated uh, and it's just not clear. That's because his original videos were like, I don't know, whatever resolution it is. But when you actually load up and play the game, it looks, it looks correct. You know, it looks good. Like that to me looks amazing. It looks great. So again, I can't take all the credit. Yes, I did add more games to it. Yes, I did make my own like theming. I, like I said, he went from arcade only. I put in the pinball, I put in the PC games, I put in the trackball and the schmucks. So I'm gonna say I didn't create the overall image. I guess I kind of updated it and upgraded it. So 
Again, shout out to the person that made Hyper V, but you know, with some modifications, it's great. I, I love every I love everything about it. It looks great. So now, as far as like the stuff that I added to it, so you got your arcade classics. I'll tell you right now the game count. This is also another advantage why I went PC, right? The game count right now on this, I don't have a solid number, but again, when it first started, just the arcade, only vertical games, was 1,123. That is all 1,123 is within this arcade classics wheel. That's all here, all vertical games. Then I took it a step further. I took from my 40 terabyte beast. I said, you know what? I'm putting a trackball on it. Let me put all the trackball games I have. What am I saying? Not all the trackball games are vertical games. So out of the 1123, I have 85 trackball games. Sorry, my camera overheated, but where am I trying to get at? I'm basically trying to let you know that all the trackball games, out of 85 of them, some of them are really horizontal games, such as Golden Tee. So Vic, now it's not vertical. Honestly, the main emulator is set you know, to spin, and it will look like this. Again, I'm the type of person where you already have a trackball, so why not just add trackball games to it? I, I honestly took my entire trackball wheel from my 40 terabyte console and I put it into this. Does it look correct? No. Does it play? Yeah. So I have Golden Tee now on this. That also does translate into the Shmups wheel. Shmups, such as like 1941, 1942, is really like the horizontal uh, vertical shooters, but as you can see, there are some shmups that were horizontal. This is a perfect example of a game that it's a horizontal game, but MAME made it vertical. Uh, you know, you got your traditional stuff that is meant to be like a shmup like that, but there is also some horizontal games to it. Not a big deal breaker. So again, 11.23 and more, there is 560 shmup games. So again, I can't really tell you like a total game count, but there, this is just jam-packed. There's a lot of games to it. Then you go into like the pinball. I only put pinball FX2 and pinball FX3. I didn't do VPX because I honestly, this is running a Dell Optiplex, a very cheap computer. And I knew I only needed MAME Arcade to work with it and it works. I did not go in that. Not to mention also, this is a $100 32-inch Insignia. It's like max at 720p. So you're not going to get high frame rates and all that like a regular V-Pin. But... It's playable, it's cool. The last little thing is that there are some PC games that are actually meant to be vertical. I don't have the videos for them except for this one called Downwell. Um, I forgot the word they used. Uh, it's a very specific word that they use for PC games that are vertical. Uh, it's cool, I still have to kind of configure like the button layouts and all that for this, basically gonna be running X360C, just like my vert, my pinball FX stuff. But it's cool, I mean, I got now PC games, I got my trackball games that I want, and I got pinball. That is why I went with the PC route. And again, the same price I would have paid for a Raspberry Pi, I have it now on this, so it works out. The one last little comment I wanna make, cause I know there's already people on the keyboards and they're trolling already, you're gonna look at this. To me, this is perfectly fine. I love how this looks, but there are gonna be some very picky people that are saying, Vic, that is a 16 by nine stretched game. You took Centipede and you stretched it 16 by nine. For me personally, this looks great. It looks perfectly fine. Not like if you did a horizontal 16 by nine stretch. I could enjoy this. I love this. Now for you people, again, it's really a four by three game. I could set this to be four by three. And there you go. Enjoy. Enjoy your 4x3 vertical game now because this is just silly. This is like pointless to me. I, I don't like how this looks. This now, it's an eyesore. You have all this empty space. I don't, I don't like how this looks. I have the keyboard because I wanted to show you guys, you know, with the tab. I don't like this. This is, yes, it's 4x3. Yes, it's the correct aspect ratio. But again, this is a 32 inch screen turned vertical and whether you hate it or not deep down you're like you know what man like that's that 16 by 9 it, that stretch looks correct it looks like it looks good for what it is so you know 
It's my cabinet. I love how this is. If you want a four by three stretch, I'll, I'll do it. It's perfectly fine, but you ain't gonna get artwork. Vic, you can't get like the bezel. No, there's no bezel artwork. If I did bezel, it would only be here. It wouldn't be top and bottom. Um, that's the only thing I could think of that somebody's gonna make a comment about. Like, oh, it's 16 by nine stretch. It looks stretch. Do four by three and be my guest. Doing it that way, why did you put, why would I put a 32 inch screen? I might as well get a 15 inch screen. That, the, the, to me it's pointless, but that's probably the last comment I'll make. I love it, I'm able to enjoy my centipede. Oh, I, I, I love it. And then also centipede, just like my other cabinets, you could do left hand or right hand. I, I love it. I love every bit of it. Again, you do have the um, leaf switch which again, I kind of regret. I'm gonna probably swap those out, but this is just a good time. All in all, this is a good time. I love it. There you guys have it. My 32 inch vertical cabinet, the last final piece for now in my battle station. It's gorgeous. I just leave it like on a track mode. Like games like Galaga, I'll leave it on a track mode. Satisfying. <laughs> Game on my guys. Game on.